right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sadko here. Welcome back to the channel. And today's episode, I'm going to talk about ERC-20 tokens and talk a little bit more about some news that we talked about previously. And uh, then we're going to go into just a little bit of market advice, the usual fun stuff. Uh, so today's program is probably going to be the, the loudest background noise uh, of all time uh, because there's construction work going on just around my house so you'll probably hear saws and banging and stuff but that's just gonna make it even more interesting now isn't it so what are erc20 tokens um so erc20 tokens are designed and used solely on the ethereum platform they follow a list of standards so that they can be shared exchanged for other tokens or transferred to a crypto wallet and the ethereum community created these standards with three optional rules and six mandatory rules the three optional rules are the token name the symbol and the decimal and the mandatory rules are total supply balance of transfer transfer from approve and allowance confused let's back up a little bit so we're going to read this article it's kind of interesting talks about erc20 tokens maybe you'll learn yourself something today so what is ethereum in the first place ethereum is a decentralized network of computers with two basic functions they are a blockchain that can record transaction and a virtual machine that can produce smart contracts because of these two functions ethereum is able to support decentralized applications dApps so uh, these dApps are built on the existing Ethereum blockchain, piggybacking off of its underlying technology. In return, Ethereum charges developers for the computing power in their network, which can only be paid in Ether, the only inter-platform currency. So depending on its purpose, dApps uh, might create ERC-20 tokens to function as a currency, a share in the company for points in a loyalty program, proof of ownership for, say, an amount of gold or a deed to a house. So where do smart contracts fit into all of this? Smart contracts are used to create ERC-20 tokens. They are also used to facilitate transactions of tokens and record balances of tokens in an account. Smart contracts are written in the program language Solidity on the basis of if this, then that logic. Think of this as a vending machine. So I will put these links in the description below. You can come and check out the uh, images for yourself and study them if you wish. Uh, so what happens after a smart contract creates a token? Uh, this is where ERC-20 comes in. So after a token has been created, it can be traded, spent, or given to someone else. ERC is a universal language that all tokens on the Ethereum network use. Uh, it allows one token to be traded with another. So let's imagine we wanted to make a crypto casino, just like in a brick-and-mortar casino. We want our players to use our chips for simplicity's sake, so a player exchanges for their fiat for our tokens and heads to a poker table. So got the analogy, but how exactly would that work? So let's uh, let's look at each of the rules for ERC-20 in our crypto casino example. They are very important for developers to follow. So let's uh, start with the optional rules. Token name, blue chip, symbol blue, uh, decimal two. We want our tokens to be divisible so that our minimum player bet is 0 0.01 blue. We could leave that decimal at zero and make one blue the minimum and raise the decimal to 18, resulting in uh, the lowest blue possible. But let's keep it simple. Uh, so now to mandatory rules. So the total supply, uh, you need to have a total supply. So the first thing our casino uh, it needs to have is a total of how many blue tokens are in circulation. Let's say our uh, poker table has a total of 10 blue with 10 players. So what about transfer? Uh, so uh, before the game can start, the players must receive their blue from the dealer. Each gets one blue. Um, and, the and so what does the function balance of do? So in the first hand of our poker game, five of the players looked at their cards and decided not to play. So each of the remaining five decided to bet 0.5 blue using that balance of, we see the five of the players have one blue and five have 0.5 blue. So how can I get ERC tokens from other users? Good news, you won the first hand and you gained 2.5 blue from the other players. But in order to take it from them, you need uh, transfer from. Without this, what is it to stop someone else from stealing your blue? So there's any way to make a counterfeit token. It uh, makes sure that there are none missing or extra so another way to safeguard the integrity of our hypothetical poker game is to make sure that no one bought extra blue to brought extra blue to the table. So approve allows the exchange to by checking the the total number of blue on the table equals ten. Uh, so can I lie and say that I have more tokens than I really do? Nope. Before a transaction takes place, the allowance function checks the balance of the user's account and will cancel the transaction if there are insufficient tokens. So we don't allow credit in our crypto casino. So we need to make sure that each player has enough blue to make their bet. If they only have one blue, then they can't bet two blue. 
So what are the benefits of a ERC-20? So before ERC tokens, uh, developers might use another terminology in the code. One token uses total amount while another uses total number. So exchanges and wallets need to build their platforms to accommodate each uh, one token's code. With a universal standard, new tokens can be put on an exchange or transferred to a wallet automatically once it's been created. So ERC-20 also makes the creation of new tokens extremely easy. And that is why Ethereum has become the most popular platform for ICOs in 2017. Uh, so are there, are there any problems with ERC-20? So there are some issues with ERC-20 to, uh, token standards that uh, do not address. There are situations that tokens might be unintentionally destroyed when they are used as payment for a smart crunch contract rather than using Ether. So an estimated 3 million has been lost because of this. So uh, to fix this bug, the Ethereum community is currently working on a new standard named ERC-223. So these standards are not compatible with ERC-20. However, so developers are encouraged to continue using ERC-20 until compatibility is realized. Uh, in April 2018, a number of exchanges suspended token deposits and withdrawals of Ethereum-based tokens due to the batch overflow bug. It is described as a classic integer, uh, integer uh, overflow issue uh, and might potentially allow an attacker to possess a huge amount of tokens. So it was noted that there's no traditional security approach to fix these vulnerabilities at the moment. So enough hypotheticals, what's a real world example? So it is uh, numbering uh, 82815 at press time. Let's take a look at some of them. Uh, so EOS, currently the fifth biggest cryptocurrency with almost 12 billion in market cap is attempting to build a network that can utilize inter-blockchain communication, it is. Tron is ranked 10th among the cryptocurrencies. And at the time of writing, it is described as an open source protocol for the digital entertainment industry. It aims to launch a content platform with ecosystem connecting all people creating different kinds of content. Great. An enterprise level public blockchain is VeChain, the 15th cryptocurrency in terms of market cap is planning to implement the Internet of Things technology to provide private keys for each product that make it possible to track them. So another thing to note about Ethereum and ERC20 tokens is that Ethereum is the gas of the network. So you, you actually need Ethereum uh, to send these ERC20 tokens uh, and that is sort of the gas to send Ethereum. So if you have a bunch of Ethereum uh, ERC-20 tokens in a wallet and you don't have any Ethereum in that Ethereum wallet, you actually can't move those, those coins without just a little bit of Ethereum as the gas. So kind of an interesting article. Another thing is that Facebook is reportedly very serious about creating its own cryptocurrency. So I talked about this yesterday a little bit. So we will likely acquire existing projects. So Facebook may seriously be considering creating its own cryptocurrency in order to afford its billions of users the possibility of making electronic payments. An anonymous source purportedly familiar with the matter told they are very serious about it. So I would actually like to see cryptocurrency in some of the games on Facebook. I don't know if that would be considered necessarily gambling. Maybe they could get around it in some way and make it not gambling. I don't know. Uh, but uh, cryptocurrency and video games is a pretty cool thing, in my opinion. Um, not that I really play Facebook games that much, but I'm sure that could be a thing. Uh, Facebook has historically not been shy about sharing its roadmap and never has blockchain technology appeared in uh, any public presentations. Instead, the company has apparently been keeping their mouths shut in regards to any future plans for a cryptocurrency. That said, an internal post earlier this week reportedly announced Facebook's blockchain initiative to the company's employees, though it didn't go into specifics, explained a Facebook spokesperson. Like many other companies, Facebook is exploring ways to leverage the power of blockchain technology in uh, this new small team. We'll be exploring many different applications. We don't have anything further to share. So insiders familiar with the situation also claim that the social media giant, unlike Telegram, has no plans to hold an initial coin offering and will almost certainly not launch any cryptocurrency in the coming year. Furthermore, uh, one source explained that Facebook will most likely acquire existing blockchain and cryptocurrency developments in an effort to create its own. So uh, they might just use some other coin. Uh, they might use some kind of other idea, uh, but I think kind of an interesting thing uh, could definitely uh, be be pretty big because Facebook, let's face it, Facebook is, is, is huge right now. Uh, I know a lot of people were leaving because of that whole information deal, uh, but it's still uh, pretty, pretty massive to say the least. Uh, so any kind of deal with Facebook from any coin would be pretty tremendous. Uh, so somebody should make Facebook coin right now and then just sell it to uh, Facebook. Go ahead and do that. Or get it me first. Let's work on that idea. It's, we'll just make Facebook coin. We'll take it from, we'll, we'll, we'll buy facebookcoin.com, the domain, and get ready for a whole bunch of money to pour in. So Gox trustee to flood the market with thousands of Bitcoin. Again, we talked about this yesterday, uh, but the price is dropping below 9K. 
Notoriously hacked cryptocurrency exchange Mt. Gox isn't done with Bitcoiners just yet. Just as it appeared, the world's most popular currency was ready to strike above the stubborn high 9,000s in price. <clears throat> Kobayashi, the trustee of the remaining Bitcoin account to be distributed among creditors, seems ready to flood another 8,000 coins onto a fragile market struggling to recover. Gox trustee to flood the market with over 8,000 Bitcoin. The tweets were unusually sure over the last three weeks. Uh, luminaries who've seen it all wistfully claim that uh, should the speculative price of Bitcoin core break above 10,000 again, and this was all but a foregone conclusion of their in their view, it would be the last time investors would ever see such a low. And then uh, something happened along the way. Uh, the hot hand held by Bitcoin enthusiasts were left cold. The price dropped to a low 9,000s. Uh, then it broke 9,000. It would finally settle near uh, 8,000 by press time. Uh, so someone, uh, please tell the drunk Mt. Gox trustee person to stop using cryptocurrency exchanges and move the over the counter to market. See, the thing is, though, with that Joseph Young, I know uh, I always love your tweets. Thing is, is that even if they put it over the counter uh, and then those whales sell it in some way on a on a on an exchange, it, it could st it could still lead to that. But it, it's a good thing. Over the counter is a good thing. So not the first rodeo. Something on the order of 137,000 Bitcoin. Uh, under, you, you got that right. 137,000 Bitcoin remain in the Gox Trust, according to various sources and wallet. So these, so people are freaking out about 8,000 Bitcoin. 8,000. And there's 137,000 left. Uh, so we could see their wallet. Um, so hopefully they go about this in a way that's not lowering the price. Nobody really knows if the first time they did it, if he did it on an exchange or not. He said it afterwards that he didn't do it on an exchange. But that was long. That was that was so well timed after the fact that everybody was angry at this guy. Then he comes out with his statement instead of coming out with the statement either beforehand or just after or during. Uh, but rather, he waited till all the way after everyone was angry at him to um, to say that he, he didn't sell them on an exchange, which I'm not sure if that's the truth or not. We don't know if that's the truth or not. So looking at uh, Turtle BC again here, um, let me refresh this just in case. Um, we are still stuck on the 9th on here. It is currently the 12th. So this chart is sometimes two to three days behind, uh, depending on when it updates. I'm not exactly sure the, the at the time it updates. Uh, but I wanted to point out a little correlation uh, with you guys. So this is the buy market's percentage. Uh, so this is not price. This has nothing to do with price, just buy market percentage. So... You know, by looking at this real quick, if you don't realize really fast, looking at the bottom, you might think to yourself, this is where the bottom of the price of coin is going to be, right? Because there's only 5.71% percent people buying it on average, right? And then you might think, well, at 92 here, this is where the price is the highest. Well, let's check. So the price was the highest, uh, supposedly. This is not, again, this is not a price chart. Uh, so 419 was the highest uh, of the price chart, So you, or the, the buy markets chart. So you might think that on Coinbase here, uh, let's check 419. And it was not, not at all. Where was the highest point? It was all the way up here uh, where it falls down to uh, 50%. So the way you read this, essentially, let me just let me just reiterate like, like how we're reading this. So um, the best time to buy is when this just breaches over 50%. Because at 4.10, if we go back to 4.10, April 10th, we can see that it was the approximately lowest time. And just after that, it breached over 50% 50 buying market percentage, right? So now we see a, an increase. So the best time to buy, uh, theoretically, is right about here when it's going to breach 50%. Now, remember, this chart is two or three days behind, so you would end up having to buy when, when the chart looks like it's down here to be on the, to actually buy on the 11th. Um, and then the, the buy market percentage is going up, so that means the price is going up, but that doesn't mean it's, it's at its highest price. In fact, it's at its highest price, again, at 50% when it's declining, when it's going the other way. So if we take a look at um, the 5th, the 4th and 5th of, of May here, let's take a look at the price and see where we were at. Let's go back to the one month. And sure enough, on the 5th of May was when we saw the highest price of Litecoin. Now, I could be doing this Bitcoin or anything like that, but just doing it with Litecoin, it's a lot easier to read for me. I just like it better. So $178. And then just after that, the buying market uh, percentage is only 44%. So then prices are starting to, 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 to lower again. And here we find ourselves... Um, at the at one of the lower points. So when this 
uh, when this graph actually starts to go back above 50%, we're actually going to be at our lowest currency prices about right here, uh, where you would see the chart go back over the 50% line. And that's when you want to buy uh, because it's going to be at its lowest point and it's going to cross that 50%. That's when you're going to buy because that's when, uh, because the prices are lowering, lowering as long as the market is technically at 49.8. 9%. Now that's going to be a slow drop, but overall average, it's going to drop. Now there's going to be dips in between, dips and rises in between, not just the same, but average overall, the price is falling. And so once you get back over that 50%, that's when prices just start to bottom out and start to go back up because now we have more buyers than sellers. And you want to sell again when that price is just crossing that 50% barrier again, because now sellers are dominating the market and we're going to be at the top. So uh, just a little bit more info on this, and I hope it uh, I hope it helps you out. Now, this shouldn't be the only tool that you use. It should never only use just one tool, but this is an amazing tool, and it shows you, on average, when to buy and when to sell. Now, this is not for day trading. This is for more of a longer term. As you can see, it took uh, several months for the market to get back up here where you would want to buy. So on 1.16, uh, uh, the price should have been uh, fairly high and started to go back down. So at 1.16 uh, here, we were starting to see it start to go down. Uh, but overall, it's not a perfect thing. Uh, but if it's over 50%, that means prices are typically rising a little bit. Uh, generally, there's more buyers than sellers, but it's just not always true 100% of the time. So again, it's just a tool. It's just going to help you out. But for the most part, we're going to see highest prices um, when we're just crossing down over a 50%. And we're going to see the lowest prices when we're just crossing above a 50%. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys next time.